Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again, and today I wanted to test out a Peltier cooler on the Raspberry Pi 4. This is otherwise known as a thermoelectric cooler. Now, if you're not familiar with these thermoelectric coolers, that's totally fine. I'm going to go over it real quick. This one here is actually a low-powered version. It pulls 5 watts. It's purpose-made to go on the back of a cell phone to keep it cool while you're gaming. And basically, the way it works is we have a hot side and a cold side, and right in the middle are the conductors. When electricity is introduced to the conductors in the middle, one side gets really hot because it's pulling the heat from the other side, and the other side, usually consisting of a ceramic plate, gets really cold, and it can actually produce ice. But this is a very inefficient way to keep things cold. That's why this isn't used in our refrigerators or freezers at the house. Now, if you're interested in learning more about thermoelectric cooling, otherwise known as Peltier coolers, I will leave a link in the description to a video all about it from DroneBot Workshop. Now, the one he's using in that video is a much more powerful unit than the one I have here, and it can actually create ice. But he takes a deep dive on how it really works, and he also shows off some different experiments. It's actually a really good video, so definitely check it out. But really, when it comes down to it, the way this works is you plug electricity into it, one side gets really hot, one side gets really cold. Now, as you can see, this does have a fan and heat sink installed on it because that heat sink does get really hot, but the bottom side gets super cold, and that's what we're going to be mating up against the Raspberry Pi CPU. Now, on a regular Raspberry Pi, I couldn't get this to fit. I mean, I could always rig something up with a little copper spacer or something like that. I actually thought about doing it on the CM4 with the CM4 board here. But then I remembered I had a slimmed down Raspberry Pi 4 that I haven't used yet. This has the GPIO taken off, the DSI, and the CSI connector, so we can get right down to it. It's also slimmed down on the USB ports. But this way, I can get the cold side of the thermoelectric cooler right up against the CPU on the Raspberry Pi 4 to keep it as cold as possible. But it actually fits on the board quite nicely. I just need to find a way to hold it down. Before I mount this up and get right into some testing, I just want to show you how cold this thermoelectric cooler can get. I'm just measuring the temperature of a Raspberry Pi sitting dormant. It's not plugged in or anything like that. We're coming in at around 22 degrees Celsius. Here's a Raspberry Pi 4 that's been idling for a little while. And the surface temperature is coming in at around 30 degrees Celsius. Now, when it comes to this cooler here, it's, it's off right now. I do have it plugged in. It's just not turned on. You can see on the back side here, we're at 24 degrees Celsius. A little hotter than the dormant Raspberry Pi, but as soon as I turn this on, we'll get a little LED. Fan spins up. This heat sink starts to get hot. That fan's blowing the heat out of there. And this side starts to get really cold. We're already down to 19, and I've seen it get as low as 8 degrees Celsius. If I give it a little while here, it should go down even further. But as you can see, it's consistently dropping, and it is cold to the touch. We're at 12.7 degrees Celsius, and if I give it a little longer, we can get down even more. 11.8, and I have seen it go as low as 8, 8.7. A few more seconds here. We're at 10, and it's going to go down a little more. But yeah, it's consistently dropping. It's much cooler than room temperature. It's much cooler than the Raspberry Pi CPU right now. And uh, like I mentioned, this is a low wattage version. It's rated at 5 watts, but I've seen it pull up to 8. And if you had something that was more powerful, you could freeze this Raspberry Pi out of there. So now what I need to do is get this mounted up on the Raspberry Pi. I need the back of this thing to make contact with that CPU, just so we can keep it as cool as possible. And even just putting it on here like that while it's running, I can feel the bottom of the Raspberry Pi getting cooler to the touch. Now, I thought about 3D printing something to get this mounted up, but I'm going to go a super easy old-fashioned way and zip tie it down. This is going to work just fine. The pad on the bottom is mated up against the CPU on this Raspberry Pi. I know it's a bit hard to see in here, but it's definitely making contact. It's not going to go anywhere. Unfortunately, since this pulls so much wattage, it's really hard for this Raspberry Pi to power it, so I will need a separate power supply for the cooler itself. Now, going into this, I never said it was practical. This is not a practical idea of cooling your Raspberry Pi. I have seen this recently implemented in bigger PCs, and hopefully down the road it does get better and more adopted. But uh, with something like this, I wouldn't go out and buy all these parts just to get your Raspberry Pi a little bit cooler. This was just an experiment that I wanted to do and see if it even worked. So now that I got everything mounted up, I want to run some tests on this. We're going to test this at the stock clocks and overclock just to see how well this thermoelectric cooler does with the Raspberry Pi 4. 
All right, so I got this up and running with Raspberry Pi OS. Up in the top right hand corner, I do have the CPU temperature listed. I know it's a bit hard to see, but with this thermoelectric cooler installed, we're sitting at around 26 to 27 degrees Celsius at idle. I'm gonna go ahead and run a stress test. I personally use Stressberry. The way the Pi is set up right now, we're running Raspberry Pi OS. This is a two gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4 and the CPU is set at the stock clock. So we're at 1.5 gigahertz. I will come back to this and overclock at 2.1. Okay, so now it's registering a idle temperature. We're sitting around 27 degrees, 26 to 27, like it says up here in the top right hand corner. What this is gonna do is automatically plot out a text document in the background. We're gonna idle for a little while, then it's gonna max out all four cores for 10 minutes and we'll see how hot this thing gets with the Peltier cooler on it. But at least right now I can tell you that these idle temperatures are definitely some of the best that I've seen. Even doing water cooling projects on the Raspberry Pi 3 or the Raspberry Pi 4, I've never seen temps this low. The results are in and the temps are looking really good here. Now on this channel I've tested a lot of different coolers, cases, fans, and things like that, and this is definitely some of the best temperatures that I've seen out of the Raspberry Pi. Overclocked and stock clocks. On the chart here in orange, we're sitting at the stock clocks 1.5 gigahertz. We reached a maximum of 38 degrees Celsius, and that's after a 10 minute stress test. Overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz, we reached a maximum of 53 degrees Celsius. And just to give you an idea of how this stacks up against other coolers that I've tested, at the top, we have the Peltier cooler, otherwise known as a thermoelectric cooler. Maximum temperature there at 2.1 gigahertz, 53. The ice tower cooler with the fan on, which is a massive little tower cooler for the Raspberry Pi 4, it hit 58, and the new Raspberry Pi fan and heat sink that fits inside of the official Raspberry Pi case did thermal throttle with this overclock. So this is looking really good, but like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, it's definitely not practical. This is just something that I really wanted to test for a long time, and I finally got around to doing it. And it does work. You can cool the Raspberry Pi 4 with one of these Peltier coolers. So yeah, I mean, it definitely works, and I actually think it looks pretty cool on this slimmed down Raspberry Pi. I have that Ethernet off, the USB's been slimmed down, GPIO's gone, CSI, DSI connector, and it fits on here really well. Unfortunately, I did have to zip tie it down. Now, there were a couple other things that I wanted to test down the road, like taking, let's say, the Flirt case, which is a passively cooled aluminum case, and putting this cooler directly on the top, so it actually cools the case itself, and in turn, it'll cool the CPU even more. Another idea I had, I actually tested it out and it didn't work out as well, was taking an aluminum block and placing it on a regular Raspberry Pi 4, and using the cooler to chill that aluminum block down, but it just didn't work out as well as it does with this directly on the CPU. And in the future, I'd actually like to test out a more powerful Peltier cooler on the Raspberry Pi, something that gets a bit colder so we can chill that CPU off a little more. But just keep in mind, I mean, this isn't going to make the Raspberry Pi any more powerful, and it's a very inefficient way to cool the Pi. Even with the Raspberry Pi overclocked to 2.1 gigahertz, you can definitely keep this cool enough with a nice little fan and heat sink and get out a lot cheaper, not burn as much electricity. But this was just something I wanted to test and I figured I'd go ahead and do it. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.